Hi guys! Uh, so for this specific video, I think I just wanted to talk to you or I parang gusto ko lang ikwento sa inyo um, how I started my business here in the Philippines. No, uh, I have a business partner so uh, I think I just want to uh, parang take you through the yung journey namin dalawa on how we chose the business, how we started it, and how it's going uh, after a year already. No? But before we reach to that point, I want to take you first to parang parang day one namin or let's just say November, November, December ng 2019. Uh, my partner and I were actually talking like, ano kaya magandang negosyo? Diba? Do you have something in mind? What are you passionate about? Right? Um, yun, yung maraming questions na ganun, which are fairly common questions naman. Uh, maraming kaming questions na tanong sa isa't isa. Trying just to figure out which one to do, right? So, it led us to the point na nag-pandemic na ilang months na into yung pwede na lumabas ulit. Uh, I think that was the middle of 2020. No, padulo ng 2020. Parang wala pa rin kami maiisip. But then, nagano kami, okay, alam namin sa sarili namin na he wanted to start a business, I wanted to start a business as well. Right? So, kami, okay, what what is something that we both have in common? Uh, no college kasi kami, both of us had uh, experience handling or owning a small, parang food cart business. So, para sa amin, okay, at least kaming dalawa were quite familiar with the food business. So, we tried to look at different, parang brands, concepts, ganyan. Then, uh, na-realize namin na parang ang hirap ata magsimula ng sariling brand, diba? Uh, alam namin, parang aminado na kami sa sarili namin na at our level of knowledge, experience, and what we have right now. So, we redirected our attention towards franchising, diba? Because the reason why franchising is good, it's because you're technically buying into three main things. Number one is the brand and reputation. Number two is the operations. And then number three, it's really the parang ease of, ease of business, right? Kasi you don't have to think of everything from scratch. So... We thought to ourselves, okay, franchising, I think it's the best way to go. Now, franchising in food, ano kayo maganda? And coming dalawa, we tried out, we tried to check out diba, a lot of different companies. Um, we all we all know about, like, for example, Potato Corner, mga Macau Milk Tea, mga, yun, iba ibang milk tea shops, right? Uh, Turks, mga ganun. However, um, those were actually quite on the expensive end, right? Now, all others were more than a million, others were near a million. So, we tried to look at ano nga ba yung mas parang affordable option, affordable option, pero maganda yung brand. So, one thing kasi na we both recognize, recognize was Aterika's Baxilod. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, just a brief story, no? Aterika's kasi... It's a very famous uh, rice bowl brand for students. It started sa La Salle, expanded to UST, and it's now almost everywhere in the country. No, they grew rapidly in a series of in a few years, and good for them, right? So, uh, kami dalawa, parang both of us loved Atarikas. Sha when ma, yung business partner ko when he was in Ateneo, ako naman when I was already working. Um, I I got a chance to magpagrab ako. Nakita ko lang at Rikas. So, I tried and I, I actually loved it. Diba? It's affordable, it's good. Para sulit siya. Sulit na rice bowl. So, yung nakita namin, okay, magkano nga ba siya? So, franchise fee was 450000 which was actually quite affordable. No? Quite affordable given its reputation. Ayun, when, when we were talking about it, parang, uh, Sige, tara, let's let's go with it, right? Let's start the conversations. So, after yun, we attended uh, parang session ng Aterikas. 
parang just for potential franchises to know more about it. Then after, may nakausap kami uh, sa Atericas. Okay, mahayos kasi may... So, isipin mo ah, for 450,000, they're giving you your own account manager. Meron silang sarili nilang commissary, which of course is practice naman. Ano? And um, they have good marketing. I mean, you know, supported yung team nila with marketing. And they also help you with registering sa Grab Food Panda. So, parang looking at that, parang, uy, sul sulit, di ba? Sulit talaga siya. So, nung after we had those conversations, everything, nag na kami, tara, split na tayo, di ba? So, hati kami ng pera, nag na kami ng pera together. And then, we made our first down payment uh, to Atericas. We made our first down payment. So, after a few months, na patayo namin siya. Napatayo namin yung stall no? na construct na everything it's there and actually ayan that this was actually the originally stamped uh, floor plan ng Atarica stall namin sa here sa Ortigas no sa Pearl Plaza so that was the originally stamped uh, uh, layout and of course syempre if you frame natin yan diba so I, i think one of the reasons why parang napadali yung buhay namin kasi for the first part sabi na lang natin ha four months namin inasekaso lahat ng requirements for the first two months we try to do it on our own again may like I'm a full time employee may business may sariling negosyo yung uh, friend ko as a part as a freelancer so alam mo yun we parang I had to take leaves so work just to go to government offices, mga ganito. And it was quite hard, ah, kasi uh, para lang din for those of you guys who are aspiring, I have to be frank, hindi ganun ka, like, I think this is common knowledge, pero it, the, gover the government processing here is not that efficient yet. Like, may isang beses pumunta kami dun, uh, parang pinabalik kami the next day, di ba, kasi ganito, ganyan. And then para ang daming kailangan na requirements na initially nung ginugol ko, hindi ko siya nakita, <laughs> 'di ba? Ang dami pa pa lang kailangan gawin, may mga iba-ibang permit ka pala kailangan kunin. So, it was quite ano, it was quite challenging. And uh, we were lucky because um si Atarikas kasi, they have a central accounting system. And then yung partner parang yung partner accounting firm nila is TVP No so uh actually shout out lang to sa TVP no cuz TVP helped us tremendously nung start and even throughout our journey. When we started with TVP, biglang na fast track in less than a month natapos lahat ng requirements, nakapagsimula kami ng construction. Kaya in two months time, boom, naglaunch na kami. 'Di ba? And kami nung business partner ko, we were very thankful for TVP because they helped us out tremendously. Right? So, ayun. Now, ito yung parang next phase, di ba? From launch to the third month, right? Um, the main issues na naharap namin doon, how do you handle it operationally, financially, and parang, parang HR, ganun, di ba? So, operationally, uh, it was quite difficult because um, not one of us was like 100% sa business. Kaya operationally, we had to be very dependent sa employees namin. We had to constantly uh, look at the reports. Like magkaroon na ng piso discrepancy. Talagang inaano na hindi, bilangin natin ulit. Uh, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. So that was actually quite, uh, parang ano yun. I, I would say one of the biggest, um, ano sa akin, na uh, ganun pala ka tedious yun. Especially if you're just starting, di ba? Ganon ka tedious yung process na yun. So, eventually, uh, alam mo yun, over a series of weeks, months, we try to improve we try to improve on the operations para mas parang system, parang systematized lahat. Kumuha kami ng POS, right? So, shout out sa Utak POS, which is our POS provider. Uh, kumuha kami ng POS which helped us sa uh, pag tingin pagtali ng sales ng inventory, de ba so a lot of those things na na experience namin siya mo na then we try to do something about it right 
sinubukan kasi namin magtipid eh. at first like wag muna tayo kumuha ng POS mano-mano na lang ng resibo ganyan uh, but then na realize nga namin it was very taxing and time consuming so yung uh, I think second naman no, when it comes to the finances we were very thankful because yung branch namin dito sa Pearl was immediately profitable day one pa lang right like never na kami ulit naglabas ng pera the money just kept you know rolling on its own one of the parang decisions namin ng business partner ko was okay let despite this let's try to be more responsible the pandemic happened diba ang dami na layoff na tao we don't want that to happen so in any case if that were to happen again at least may pera yung business diba ang ginagawa namin uh, at the end of each month 50% lang ng net profit ang pwede namin kunin para sa amin, parang ihati namin between us two. That sounds quite big, di ba? However, na parang, uy, 50% naman ng net profit, di ba? Pero, if you look at the actual figures, you have to realize na, kunari ang sales namin would be, let's just say, 100k. Kunari ganun, 100k. 50% nun, cost of goods sold mo. So, parang you're left with 50,000. And then the other like 30 to 35 percent goes to salary, rent, utilities, and other expenses, right? So now you're left with, ito, I'm, I'm being optimistic, ha? like on a good month, you're left with like 15 percent. Kami, ang average nga namin, like yung first months namin was 12 percent, eh, right? So, yun, you're left with 15 percent. No, so... Sa 15% na yun, parang 15,000, 50% of na is 7,500. Ihahati ko pa yung 7,500 between us two. Diba? So, parang in paper, uy, kumita ka ng 100k. Pero parang ang uwi lang namin, between us was like 3,250. Something like that. Parang 3,000 something. So, um, alam mo yun, that was one of the parang main realizations namin when it comes to the finances na even though you're earning a lot, not a lot actually goes to you. And then yung third naman, uh, the third, I think, realization is when it comes to employees. We are a micro-business, right? We only have two employees. Uh, we're, we're not earning millions a year. So, alam mo yun, we looked at the guidelines kasi ng Dole. Pag micro-business ka, ano nga ba yung mga pan-exemption na pwede? However, biglang parang nagkaroon kasi ng nagkaroon kami ng altercation with our first employees which led to ito ah, for the first few months isipin mo I actually gotten uh, like a dole threat from one of my employees immediately so ako naman I told her like buti na lang na pag-usapan namin kasi I told her um, do you really think na dinadaya kita kasi we're just following this pinakita ko naman sa kanya eh. we're just following this so after nun, uh, nag-discuss kami ng business partner ko. So let's put ourselves there already. Let's pay everything that needs to be paid. Right? So that was also one of the realizations na we had during like this, the course of our business. Right? Na employee, employee welfare and, and employee like complaints are actually very meaningful. Kasi if you are in that position na, yung sasabihin ka na empleyado mo na, uy, idodole kita. Even though, like, you can be as confident as you want, but a threat is still a threat. And then, yun. Um, the second, actually, second thing dun sa point ng employees is, nakakakaba ang, ano, nakaka, actually, nakakatakot yung fact na employees would actually just leave without notifying you. And unfortunately, we actually experienced that three times. No, three times throughout our one year, ha. Ganon siya kalala. Hindi naman sabay sabay, but pa isa isa sila. Uh, dalawa was because of uh, parang health condition, and the other one yun talaga nag a wall lang siya. Um, the reason why I'm saying na nakakakaba siya, kasi again, we are a small business. Mawalan ka lang ng isang employee, ang laki ng impact niya sa operations ng business mo. Si Atarikas kasi, they provide reliever parang reliever options, right? Pero hindi agad-agad yun, ha? Um, that's also one thing pala you have to consider when you start franchising. Do they have that option? May reliever ba sila? Uh, kasi, alam naman namin, we can't pay for a reliever monthly. No? Uh, kasi, we only earn so much. 
So, um, ang mahal kasi ng reliever option ni Atarikas. Parang, umaabot siya ng 800 per person a day. So, that's quite expensive, ah, considering kung 570 ka to 800. That's a big jump. So, ayun, parang ang laki ng expenses namin, kasi ipapatrain mo yung tao, ipapatrain mo yung tao, may allowance yun, tapos, yun nga, pag umalis siya, babayaran mo reliever. Ang laki ng costs pagdating sa ganyan. So, alam mo yun, that was one of the, parang pinaka-ano rin na, my God, pag ano pala, pag may isang employee umalis sa ganyang kalit ng operation, it's really, you really feel it <laughs> sa sales. And of course, sa welfare, nung naiwang employee, kasi siya sa salon ng lahat ng trabaho eh. Um, one of the realizations sa amin dun is to try and keep a healthy pool of contacts sa, na possible employees. Right? You'll, you'll go through that naman eh. Marami kang may interview ng magagaling na tao, may mga experience, ganyan. And at least, if you always have contacts, like, ilista nyo sila like sa Excel lista nyo um, para in any case kung kahit kinailangan sa future pwede na lang sila itap and then now uh, I'll just jump right I don't know now now we've reached one year already I would say it was quite a journey uh, personally ano siya ano siya you learn a lot you learn to to know how to speak up more to negotiate sa rent sa supplies, even sa employees mo and even other potential like partners. No, you learn how to negotiate, learn how to manage your money sa business, and you quickly realize that not everything is quick. No, what a weird saying, but parang yun. At the end of each month, we only earn parang okay. Parang personally ko na na uwi lang namin is on average five thousand. If you look at that, that will Parang ang liit nun, di ba? From for what? For how much you're earning each month. But then you realize, kami, na-realize namin ng partner ko, we put a lot back sa business. And now, a little, like, actually a little before a year namin, anniversary namin, we're about to expand to a second branch already. With internal funds to, ha? You know, you know how that feeling na parang, okay, the first, ang liit ng kita mo. But then, teka, bubukas na ako ng pangalawa eh. And then, it's funded internally. Now, pag open ng pangalawang yun, dodoble na yun. And then, hopefully, we could, the third branch could come in a bit quicker, and quicker, and quicker. So, that's the compounding effect of entrepreneurship, right? You learn a lot about yourself. You learn discipline. Um, and then, when you see the, yung, when you reap the benefits of your business, if you're willing to like reinvest lang and reinvest and reinvest, you will eventually see na grabe, magko-compound yung kinikita mo in years to come. No, so ayun, uh, if you have any questions about ano yung naging talagang thought process namin no when it comes to the financials, why did we choose Atarikas? Why franchising? Why this? Why not that? Um please do comment down below. I know this was quite a lengthy video but uh, gusto ko lang like gusto ko lang sana makwento sa inyo eh, yung pinagdaanan namin. Uh, yung pinagdaanan namin and hopefully you guys could learn from it as well. No, this is like a personal experience. It really happened to me and a lot more actually na hindi ko na sinama sa video na to, no. And hopefully if you have questions, masagot ko din siya uh, throughout those questions of yours. So, I hope that this video could help any of you aspiring business owners, no, aspiring entrepreneurs in the future. Uh, no business is small. Uh, no no business is small. Uh, franchise, mapa-franchise man yan ng maliit na brand or malaking brand. A business is a business. And if you are able to really persist through it, like you're willing not to get, you're willing to reinvest your income, you're willing to do that, you're willing to look at the long-term goal. And I'm pretty sure you and ako and many of us could hopefully reap greater benefits in the future so yeah uh, this is just a simple video no and i hope uh you guys learned a thing or two so yun lang thank you again and i'll see you in the next one bye